Well, thank you very much, and thank you for uh, inviting me here to, um, to present in Vancouver. I'm, I'm a marine biologist by training, and what I want to do in the few minutes that I've got is bring a perspective from the oceans, and in particular try to relate that um, to the question of the circular economy and to recycling, and to try to illustrate why I think those principles are really, really important to help to reduce the accumulation of debris in our oceans and the associated impacts. It's now very clear that marine litter is contaminating our sea surface and our shorelines on a global scale. It's strewn, even in really remote places, far, far away from the population centers on remote islands. And indeed, if we take a submersible down to the deep sea, down to places that have not previously been visited by, by humans, one of the first things we're likely to encounter is that some of our waste, our plastic waste, as we see in this slide here, has reached that location ahead of us. Some of the litter in our oceans is indeed big enough to be seen from space, but actually the most numerous items are now the very, very small particles, the microplastic pieces, down to pieces less than the diameter of a human hair, pieces that have arisen from the fragmentation of large items, the crisp packets and the bottles, but also from the direct release of small particles, such as the fibers from clothing. It's also very clear that once in the environment, all of this litter causes a range of problems. It causes a variety of harm. It has negative economic consequences, with billions being spent every year in cleanup costs. And those are the costs just to keep clean the places we really want to keep clean, the tourist beaches, the ports and harbors. Think about better use of that resource. It's also very clear that there's a potential hazard to, uh, to mariners, to people using the oceans. Perhaps most documented, of course, is the harm to wildlife, with over 700 species known to encounter marine debris. Many of those species already considered endangered or threatened, and that also includes commercially important species, the fish and shellfish that we want to consume. Many of those encounters are harmful, and some of them are fatal to wildlife. I could spend you know, the next five minutes talking about those problems in the ocean, but actually I want to turn a little bit more towards the solutions, because although we could argue about the relative importance of some of those slides I've put up about wildlife, I think I very rarely meet anybody that denies there's a problem here. Most people are agreed there's too much litter in the ocean and we want to do something about it. Now, one of the things I, I would really like to make clear from the outset is that in my view, plastics themselves as materials are not the problem. They're lightweight, they're durable, they're highly versatile in the range of applications, and they're inexpensive. In essence, they have the potential to reduce our footprint on the planet. So what then is the problem? What's the challenge? Well, this is a picture of the center pages from Time Life magazine in the 1950s, and it's an article that is extolling the virtues of what it calls a throwaway living, the fact that we can have the convenience of disposable items that we can then simply discard without wanting to worry about them at all, that these end-of-life plastics are valueless and throw away. At the time this picture was taken, we were making about 5 million tons of plastic. Today, it's 300 million tons. 40% of everything we produce are single-use items of plastic. And those plastics are accumulating in the environment. My view, where do we need to look in terms of solutions? We need to move back up the supply chain. We could think about cleanup, but if we do so, then we're accepting that we're going to be cleaning up in perpetuity. What we really need to do is to redirect the flow, because 50% of the litter that we find in the oceans are single-use items of plastic. If we can redirect that away from the ocean, then we're going to see much less accumulation of waste. And here's where the real synergy is with the circular economy and waste management on land. Because if we can move plastic, end-of-life plastic, back to its starting point, then we're taking that carbon and we're potentially turning it into new plastics. There's a difference here from fossil fuels where the carbon is burned. Here the carbon source remains at the end of the lifetime and has the potential to become new plastic items. In my view, the litter in the sea is a symptom of the problem. If we tackle the problem of waste management on land, we're likely to see associated benefits of a reduction in the sea because more of the waste is captured. So in my view, one of the major areas, and it's really important to recognize there's no single solution here, but one of the major areas is to think right back up the, up the, up the supply chain, right back to the design stage. Yes, we need to do design products for a life in service, 
But so far, in my view, we've done a poor job of designing products to make sure that they have minimal impacts on the environment and that they can be recycled and captured at the end of their lifetime. Whether that's a release of fibres from clothing, some of these garments are releasing four or five times as many fibres as one of the others. Why is that? Whether it's the design of bottles, and keep those coloured bottles in mind that you see on the right-hand side. We may come back to those in the questions. But design for life and end of life in order to reduce environmental impacts. And I think there's a real challenge here to industry to step up to the mark because unfortunately the problem of the, the revulsion of this accumulation in the oceans is now so severe that citizens are actually turning away from the benefits of plastic. They're starting to demand a plastic-free supermarket, which in my view isn't the future. It denies the benefits that plastic can bring. But I think the time is now really pressing for us to move towards reducing these environmental impacts of plastic by designing for life and for end of life a material recovery. So thank you very much. If you want to find more about the science that sits behind the things I said, please visit our website, the International Marine Litter Research Unit. Thank you very much.